Smoke it up. Oh, yeah. We about to do a lot of that. Big Chief. You already know. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Little Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, little cheaper. Uh, <laughs> Big cheaper. Little cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, damn. That did not go the way I thought it was going to go. I didn't think it did. I was, I was, I was going to look a lot cooler in my mind. You feel me? Mm -mm. Hold on one second. What do you think, bro? And we in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, big girl. Can they back it up? Hey. Go, go, big girl. What you gonna do? Go, go, big girl. What you gonna do? Go, go, big girl. What you gonna do? Go, go, go big mama. Oh, big mama. How you be, man? What's going on with you? How, how's life? Oh, well, life is really copacetic, man. I really can't complain. Um, good days, good days, good patience. I feel like this is the field. Like once again, I always say this is the field I should have been in for many, many years ago. Uh -huh. I always say I want to help people, and I feel like I help at least one person on some other shit a day. So I meet my quota for myself. Remember, so I'm good. Um, not upset at work. Um, the lazy people I may work with, they're not being as lazy, so that's improving. So, home life, that's good. <laughs> Holidays coming up, so that's always a rough time, but I'm going to get through that, too. I'm doing a little bit better this year. Normally, right about now, I'm prepared, I was, you'd be preparing myself for bullshit, preparing myself for just upset and anger and depression, but I don't even feel like that's going to be even nowhere near me this year in the holiday season. So I feel like it's on some real good shit. Um, Thanksgiving coming up. We're going to get the oldest or go, yeah, we're going to scoop the oldest up, take her do some holiday shit with the rest of the kids this weekend, next weekend. So that's looking good. So everything looking good right about now. I really can't say I got no complaints, no issues. That's really good. Really, really good. What about you, my friend? Um, like I said before, man, like life is good this week. Um, son doing well, wife doing well. Uh, new job is going good. Um, a little annoyed. Uh, the new job, like it's great, but because I I just started, I can't really like take days off, and because of that, I can't go home for Thanksgiving with the wife and the boy. So I'm a little frustrated about that, but mm, of course, you know, like overall, it's cool. Um, trying to figure out, I think I might do a live stream or something on Thanksgiving since I ain't got no work and ain't shit else to do that day. So might make you know make make a, a positive out of a negative real quick. But other than that, man, like I. Like I've been saying for the past couple of weeks, man, this uh transition from the old job was the best thing to, that ever happened to me. Like, it really got me in a good headspace for the first time in a minute. And, like, you know, I'm still battling with my anxiety, but it's a lot less uh panicky just for one, because of the meds. But for two, a lot of it, I think, too, is just not being in a place where there's so many overlapping triggers mm -hmm. on a daily basis you know what i mean sometimes just kind of giving yourself some space and distance from those things like you know what i mean it's like if you stop it's like if you a boxer and you take a break for a minute it can kind of let some things heal up you an athlete a basketball player whatever if you get if you give your body a minute to kind of just not do that for a second and then come back to it sometimes be a little better just because now your body is like 
You done healed up. You done had time for some scar tissue to settle in, some calluses to build over, like, you know what I mean, as opposed to just consistently getting up same wounds reopened or, you know what I mean, beating on the same shit. So feels better. Uh, but, yeah, man, life is fucking great, bro. Like, um, really looking forward to year three of the podcast. Uh just a lot of good things on the horizon. This new editing software I, I'm using like makes it a lot easier for me, you know, being a novice. So I maybe, you know, I, I know I'm doing something right when uh I get a video that somebody think that Pat edited and I did it. So I know I'm doing I'm on the right path. Uh, oh, yeah. so feel good, like okay, I'm 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 starting to finally get it. You know what I mean? Oh, for the past two years to try to really understand the video part of editing like the audio shit is easy but the video part is like really the people who do it well it, I, I definitely salute them because that shit is a talent like a motherfucker so uh yeah man just uh trying to consistently get better and uh excited about life and uh excited about you know tonight's recording and uh man yeah man with that being said what's up guys Welcome to show with two friends, three friends, five friends, everybody friends, separated by this, this connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. As always, on one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I'm along with what's happening, man. It's facing the place, oh, somewhere in this race, but we'll see where I'm at by the end. Indeed, indeed, and you will notice that there's a pause that's kind of where another intro usually is so shout out to pat uh pat is actually you know getting himself prepared for not only you know uh uptick at work but also traveling back home for the holidays so he got a lot going on this weekend so safe travels hope everything goes well and we'll be seeing him soon uh hopefully uh what's today saturday yeah so we'll hopefully tomorrow night uh, as we pull up on uh, a brother of a certain age uh, channel um, and we do this uh, movie breakdown. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be breaking down um, Tales from the Hood. Uh, if you've ever seen that movie, uh, you know uh, a lot of the social comment there made in that movie uh, was very poignant for its time. Um, and we're going to be exploring that and uh, seeing how, how, how those themes still apply today. So please, please check us out on that channel. A brother of a certain age, a brother of a certain age. Uh, he's on YouTube. Please go to the channel, subscribe, and then check out that tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, so look forward to that, and uh, we'll be ha we'll have Pat back for that. Hopefully, uh, for that. And otherwise, man, me and Face about to rock this shit. You know how we always do every week, coming to y'all live in color, talking that shit. Um, and you know, giving y'all our point of views and starting these conversations, man, please, yo, what I really want to see is an uptick. When we first, you started this, we used to talk about, a uh, fucking Umar Johnson all the time. And we had a lot of comments back then. And I, I really want to see that pick back up. Um, I really want these conversations to be started. Like we, we start the conversations and then we want to keep them going. You know, we want to hear your perspectives and, uh, it, it allows everybody to just learn, grow and, and you know, kind of, uh, Get their voice heard, man. So, uh, please, 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 whatever platform you listening or watching this on, comment, comment, comment. Um, and yeah, with that being said, man, um, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, we got some some really dope topics, and you know, when me and the bro get together, it's always just uh, it's we, we got, some, but it might go somewhere else just because you know, like you 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 looking at you know quarter century of just yeah. Uh, us being together, so like you know, what I mean, pause. God damn it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, being cool, being friends, being bros. You know how that works. Yeah. You my motherfucking brother, man. But shit. Yeah, but anyway, uh, so yeah, man, we about to get off into this um, shit and uh, but, Facebook what we talk about tonight, man. Yeah. Um. First, let's let's go to the docket straight up because I saw you had uh, mention. I can't pronounce that the young lady name that's been in the news. Um. Yeah, Pronounce the name for me. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 don't sit right with me, that whole little situation. Um 
I don't know if what was on that videotape led to her demise, but that whole situation is giving me like Kanika Jenkins vibes from a few years ago. How uh, you you went out and trusted with your friends and shit like that. Your people was talking yeah. to you, then a few hours later, there's some bullshit and people lying. It's not like people lying and came about like like friends ain't friends. You gotta pick and choose people you you surround yourself with carefully, especially people you go out of town with like it, this is a sad ass situation. Like, it was it alcohol poisoning? No, because the coroner said it was something else. It was spinal um, separation of severe separation of the spinal cord or something else. So that ain't alcohol poison. God damn, that ain't alcohol poison. It, it, it need to be some accountability and some just true justice. I, like I don't know what was done in the Kanika Jenkins um, case because I don't even think nobody was held accountable for that. I think they just called it. Uh, some yeah. type of some type of accidental Just, death. Like, I feel like with these stories, I feel like every maybe two or three years, we get a story about a black woman or a young black boy or or somebody, and it's like this weird circumstance surrounding their death, where everybody sees some fuck shit going on, but. It's like a lot of people there, but nobody sees anything. And then the circumstances themselves be weird. And then you hear a lot about it at the beginning. And then as soon as the investigation starts, you hear nothing else about it. It'd be like a whole lot of online no. sleuths and everybody talking about it. And then you don't hear nothing else about it. Like, I, I have no idea what happened in the Kanika situation. And I'll be honest, I watched this video of this young lady get abused, attacked, uh, by what would uh, I guess the people that, that that everybody that I've seen put the video out is saying that this was her friend, and another friend was yeah, the one that was a friend there. But all right, I don't fought friends before, right? I ain't never like like when friends fight, they might fight, but it's never like I'm trying to hurt you, hurt you. You know what I mean? It's more like I need to get, to get I'm trying to get my point across. Yeah, like this young lady was beating her as if her life depended like it was some type of a street fight or like a cage pit like fight. Like it like I you don't fight your friend like that. And then like for the person that's supposed to be a friend, how you record like how you a dude. And you watching two women fight like that, and you don't just go ahead and step in the middle and break. Hey, yeah, y'all go ahead and chill out, man. You take one of them in the other room, you know what I mean? You take one of them downstairs, leave one of them upstairs, let them cool the fuck out, you know. But you don't, you don't record it and then be like, right back. Why you not? What the fuck? It, like the whole situation just looked like a setup. And if it wasn't a setup, yeah. the makes it really horrible because the young lady then dies afterwards so it's like it, everything points to y'all two know something and it's very weird mm -hmm. weird I, I don't like the story and, and try to get to a bullshit story right 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 it's weird shit yeah weird shit. like this shit make these type of stories make me real fearful my, my daughter grew up in like, this is real fearful to let my children go out of town on the old and shit like that. I, I can't get down with this shit. Something happened to my kids. Like, it ain't, I ain't have time enough for no fucking ass. Whoever she with, I'm going to put some, put some, uh, put some Liam Neeson type shit. We're going to leave Liam Neeson on the ass. <laughs> like, I, I don't, I, mentally, I know I can't take it. And Lord knows what her parents are going through right now. Lord knows what Kanika Jenkins went through. Lord knows what Kendrick Johnson and her parents went through. When you if something happens to your kids, that's some other type of trauma.
true. That's my damn bag. Okay. You okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't really know where to go from there, but uh, rest in peace to Shanquello. Um, Shanquello Robinson, uh, rest in peace to her. Prayers up for her family. I hope justice is served. I yes, Lord, please. There is something to though. Like, I don't know whether it's a black market thing or what, but there is something to people keep coming up dead and missing on these weird circumstances, bro. It, it's not like, like it to this. I've heard that conspiracy theory, like it's a black market for black for certain organs and black people and stuff like that. I, yeah, I haven't so really just, done that. Just organs in general. But. Oh yeah, it, it is. It is organs. Like motherfuckers. Like it was just a story. A girl went. A lady went across seas or went out of out of the country for a BBL, ended up getting her kidney taken or some shit. So I mean, yeah, and, it, and it's one um, Indian country. I forgot, I forgot where in India it is, but it was a whole bunch of men. The doctor was removing a whole bunch of men's kidneys and selling them, telling them he was doing something else, but he was removing all their kidneys. This is like a little documentary on this whole group of these dudes. All of them got the same exact scar, the same place. All their, all their kidneys got stolen, and the doctor was selling them on the black market. Yeah, the shit motherfuckers do for money out here to 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 other humans. Yo, people are cruel. At, at the heart, of, at the heart of hearts, motherfuckers are still cavemen. You said what? At the heart of hearts, motherfucker, some motherfuckers are still cavemen. Oh, that that's real. And the, the, the Neanderthal gene is is still alive in a lot of people. They got them first motherfuckers. The primordial ooze, that motherfucker. Primordial ooze, niggas. Now, now they ancient ninja turtles. Mm -hmm. Nigga, shit. Tell you, man, shit been crazy. So, go back to the news again. So, did Trump announce his um uh, his twenty twenty four shit? Yes. Now, the short answer, yes. Yep. So, do you think it's going to be validated? Is he actually going to campaign, campaign? Campaign? I believe he's going to campaign for the nomination. Whether he wins the nomination or not, I'm not sure. Because after this uh, midterms, a lot of people are kind of like, I guess, turning their back on him because they realize that people ain't really following the Trump narrative in their constituencies. So like it's a, it's a weird dynamic. Like he still has a hell of a lot of support from the conservative side, but there's also a lot of them kind of turning back. So I don't know if he going to win the nomination, but I do believe that motherfucker going to run again. I believe as many times they let him run at this point, because at this point, I believe with Trump is not about the presidency. It's about the attention and the, prestige of being the president and having mm -hmm. all the people clamoring over him I think is is that type of power thing with him I don't think it's ever been about real estate or money or none of that I think it's been about he likes to be That's in it. charge feel like he's the man so like being what's, what's better than being president and he felt that for four years and he had all of these people telling him yeah you the man regardless of what dumb shit he did or what fuck ups he made or whatever so for him to get that type of power and then lose it, if they t as many times as they tell him that, that that he can try again, he coming back. Oh, he's gonna try. Now it's just a matter now the conservatives smart enough to realize that like the world only gets worse if y'all keep voting dumb people in. Like it's one thing if y'all wanna go against Democrats, cool. Alternative points of view, because sometimes lead to good things. But the problem is 
when you want to like follow these fringe folk like follow people that have nuance that have a little bit of wiggle room and and open-mindedness and like they're willing to receive new factual information and update their perspective you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. i think that's the key going forward because i think what's happening is you got you got a lot of nuanced people coming up (laughs) that are voting now and uh millennials in general are kind of we're we're different because we don't really like a lot of bullshit like we're cool on you know hey whatever your hey we, we, we'll let you be a little weird but like when you start going off into the fringes on either side we kind of like give pause because we've seen so many different eras of weirdness we've been through reagan we've been through uh goddamn clinton we've been through obama we've been through bush We've been through 9 11. We've been through Afghanistan and like we so on and so forth. So, like, we've seen so much wild shit. We kind of like just overall jaded. So, you kind of got to be like willing to show us that you know what you're talking about, which is why you're seeing on conservative sides more, more candidates winning that are, they're still staunch. Republicans and conservatives, but they're also having some uh more millennial ideals as far as like they they not necessarily going down the QAnon fringe type rabbit holes no more. Right. They kind of, they they're staying grounded in like let's just keep it to the politics and the and the the policies of it as opposed to like let me go down this road of these conspiracies and let me go get weird like Trump and call name. Let me just. So you're seeing a rise in like more like straight politics, which is a good thing for the people at the end of the day, because we don't have to be dealing with a, uh, as many nuts. Hopefully, that's the god damn it. Pause. Um, won't have to deal with as many crazy people. <laughs> I don't need no damn pause counter. <laughs> now what I see happening is I see him not getting a Republican on um, vote. But I see him still running under an independent. Oh, that would be horrible for him. Well, that would be horrible for the Republicans, but it wouldn't be good for him because he would still lose. All that would do is siphon votes away from the Republican base. And then basically the Democrat, whoever runs in the Democrat slot, pretty much got an easier, a easier way from what I would see. Because I think but- that's the problem now in the Republican Party is that they're facing this they're facing this weird space of like they're going against the Democrats but they also have in like two separate camps in their own party that's going against each other so it's like they have this weird like they're they're fighting everywhere so it's like right now they what they really need to do is just rally and figure out all right what what direction are we consolidating our focus on? Are we going here with the with the Trump? Are we going here with the Pence? Are we going here? With, like, what type of ideology are we going to kind of agree on? And, and like, let, let's come up with a platform here that we can all rally behind so we can actually do something. Because if they fight each other, it, it only lends more to an uptick in exactly what you said. Trump going independent, but also just a lot of these like senators and Congress people going independent and libertarian and all this. And then now your party base is cut, which makes the Democrats get a rise in ease. Cause like now, you know, you they they need less of a percentage of the actual vote to win. So like I think the best thing for Republicans to rally their party base, and I think the best thing for Democrats is to make sure that they also don't begin to go fringe on the social justice tip, like where they could become these super SJWs to the point where they kind of offend or they begin to alienate their normal voter block as well to the point where they start pushing them away and then you get more Democrats becoming independent. I think... Mm -hmm. Thing. If, you, if you're going to keep parties, then keep parties. If not, then strip everything of parties and just have like 
a set number of slots, right? You we got four slots of nominees or six slots, and that's how many total nominees for this candidacy we can have, and then have whoever win those that amount of the votes going into it in these primaries, have them be the six. And then you run with that, and that's the campaign. And whoever win that, then you go with that and good night, nurse. But I think instead of uh, like, it, it's too much. Like it's what I think we're seeing is like people starting to become more free thinkers and just getting tired of like, all right, like I don't want to keep toting this part of the line because I, I believe in some of this, but I don't believe in there. Like some of this is like, hold on, I don't. That ain't what I believe. Mm-hmm. Though. Put you on these ten things, but these five, you lost the fuck out of me. So I think you're seeing a rise in people that's just kind of like, yeah, I don't really care about the part that like, who who talking to me? Hey, you, you got something for me? Are you doing anything for me? Do you but got me? And, and you know, I, but I think if we're going to do that, I think with, what the problem is that holds us back from that is the party. Like, we either got to yeah. go all full-fledged where everybody pick a side and the parties pick a staunch difference in their ideology so that you have choice or just give a, a, a open candidacy with a set amount of slides and then have the people just pick who they think talks best to the general public or the majority of the people and you go with that because you're going to have people that's pissed off every election because somebody ain't going to like this dude this, this dude or this woman that run is not going to talk to this guy. She, they, they might talk to 60, 70% of these people, but them 30% going to be pissed. So I think you just go with the majority. And, but yeah, that's my Do you think the Santas could get the vote? The who? The Santas? The Rod- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he can run for the candidacy of, like he can run for the nomination of his party. But I don't think he would win anything. I think he is too he's too tainted at this point. I think it's too much of a like when you have a big blow up like that and it's within I would say five years of the next cycle, it's too close and too fresh in the voters' mind for you Anybody to catch. That yeah, like you might have like your hardcore people that rock with you. You know what I mean? Like anybody. So you might have like this 30 percent, but it's going to be hard as hell to get that other 20 some percent you need to actually win the vote or that other 10 to 15 percent. Because them people are going to be like, yeah, you you wild out on that one. I'm all right. Who, who this right in right here that just put their name on the ballot at the last minute? I'll look, I'll go for them before I go for you. You know what I mean? So I think you, you get that type of dynamic. But that's my. That's my overall thought, but I I don't think he's also strong enough of like, I don't know that he has a big enough accomplishment either. Like a lot of times you either have to be like an amazing orator, which I don't see from him, or you have to have some type of amazing accomplishment that you hang your hat on. Like even when Mitt Romney ran and lost, he was in a, he was a bit, a great businessman. So you could see how he could like apply that principle to what he's going to do. You got, you know what I'm saying, even George Bush, he was known as being the owner of the baseball team and all that type of shit back in the day. And you have uh, Clinton, who was known as being a great governor in Arkansas and bringing a lot of policy change that, that brought some good things to that state. So you have people like running that usually that have some accomplishments. Like even Trump, a lot of the people that rocked with him initially before he started like talking and you heard the craziness. <laughs> A lot of people was rocking with him just off the jump just because they knew him as a person that had made a lot of money. So when you have these accomplishments, you can kind of either hang your hat on that or you could be a great speaker and kind of rally the people behind whatever you believe in. So like Obama, he really ain't had no like strong. I done done a million things. It was more like this is what I believe and I, my ability to communicate to that communicate that to you. He was like one of them dudes that give you the speech before the football game. Mm-hmm. Like, it's fired up. Yeah, you either got to get me fired up or you, like even Reagan, he was just an actor and a bad, like and a B actor that he wasn't nobody special. Like, 
but he was able to communicate and resonate with people at that moment in a way that made that touch their emotion. So you either got to touch their emotion or you got to appeal to their logic by having some type of accomplishment that big where you be like, oh, yeah, you that nigga. It's just like being a head president, being the president or being a politician is like being a head coach of a pro a pro uh, sports team. Like mm-hmm. you either got to be really good with your X's and O's or really good with your rah-rah. But for me to respect you as a player, you either I either got to know that you either got to have some type of accomplishment, whether that be you don't want championship, you done done, you done brought a team some success, you done done some, or I got to believe in your message because you be like, yeah, and I be like, yo, nigga got me hyped up. I'm ready to run through a brawl, a wall. Like, you know what I mean? But it got to be one of them too. Otherwise, you just there. Like, if you the dude that just got a whole bunch of good ideas, but you don't communicate well, and I don't know you, fuck do I care? Like, you you might have the best message ever, but there's nothing there to invest me. And most people don't invest in strangers unless there's a hook. Like, con men on the street that sell shit, they either catch you with the fact that they can, that they point to being linked to something that's like valuable in your mind like oh i work with disney oh i know disney they're they're a successful company they got brand recognition and trust or i talk really well and i get you so hyped up about this thing that i'd have made you buy this pen for a thousand dollars and it's really just a bit just a regular old big pen ballpoint so like i i think it, it Life comes down to that. Like when you talking about meeting a stranger, they gotta sell you on something, and it ain't too much that's gonna yeah. help you on a stranger. Like you know, a family member, somebody that's cool with you, they'll get you because you love them. But for a stranger to get you, you gotta be the rah rah nigga, or they they gotta be linked to an accomplishment that you think is dope, like that you value. That's my thought. Good shit. Good shit. But yeah, going into that. Trouble, I don't that? know. Who fuck, I don't. I don't know who the fuck could possibly get the vote on either side. I just hope whoever does eventually win twenty twenty four does some good shit. Big fat. We, we do some good shit. Country needs a fucking win. Yes. Yes, we do. I'm looking for an internal win, not no war type win. We need a in country win. Gotta get it right, people. Nice. Gotta get it fucking right. Tell you what, in 2022, I'm kind of fucking losing. I feel like every Shit. I feel like every other week it's another fucking hell for something, for some culture or something or somebody. Another, so, another, you know what I'm saying? Just but, out of fucking control. Yeah. And with that being said, like speaking of L's, like that kind of leads me into my, uh, what I was thinking about for this week. Uh, so, like, there's a lot of people taking nails right now in society. Uh, you know, we talked about a couple of weeks a weeks ago, uh, Kyrie and Kanye, and and now uh, Chappelle had his monologue, and people are now looping him into that thing. And uh, so I was having this conversation. All right, so it ain't had nothing to do with Kyrie and Kanye. It has something to do with Drake, but it led me into Kyrie and Kanye, and then it led me into this whole rabbit hole of just thought. And then I was like, well, I'm going to bring it to the pod. So here we go. All right. So me and the wife was listening to when the Drake album first came out, me and her was listening to it. And of course, the big thing about the Drake and the 21 Savage album when it first dropped was that Drake was supposedly coming at all these people. Now, mind you, we had already talked about the lyrics. So I was already kind of familiar with what she was talking about. But when we talked about it, you know, I'm talking about it with y'all. So. You know, we all friends, so we have similar, uh, I guess, worldviews on certain things. And we're all men. Talking to her, it was a different experience, obviously, because she's a woman. So 
when we got to the Meg the Stallion line or whatever, right? You know, we were talking about that, and and she, you know, whenever we listen to new albums, we kind of just talk about what we think of the lyrics. What we like, sometimes she'll ask me my thoughts on lyrics if she don't understand. Like, well, what do you, what was that double entendre talking about? Like, we'll discuss that. Like, if she ain't heard about some rumor or some pop culture thing that makes the reference link or whatever, so. She was like, well, what you think of that? I was like, you know, for me, it's just a double entendre. I honestly don't know if it was a shot. But what I will say is I think that, like, a lot of rappers that have no idea and have no relationship or no even care about the situation with Meg Thee Stallion might have made that that lyric if they, if they could have thought of it. Like, it, it's just a good lyric to me because it plays off of a well-known reference. Anybody that hears it is going to immediately get it, and it's a dope way that he linked it to the rising women that just be around kind of, you know, getting these shots and all this. So all of that, whatever, whatever, whatever. With her, she immediately looked at Drake as attacking a black woman. She immediately tied it to the narrative of, like, attacking black women and black women being attacked in America and, like, uh, other men who don't believe me, um, like uh the baby and all them um kind of saying it points to the issue of black women not being respected in society in general in America, et cetera, right? So when she said this, I, I questioned first like well, why it had to be that and why couldn't it just be a dope lyric that was just capitalizing off of a recent event? Like why what made her immediately kind of link it to that specific uh, issue as opposed to you know because you're talking about people who live in the same Calabasas area of California they all kind of live in the same radius they go to the same little house parties together they record in the same studios like these people ain't they're not necessarily foreign to each other like they actually know each other so when they're talking shit it may be just a homeboy homegirl arguing it may not necessarily be like a bigger thing attached to it but yeah when she when she uh when i questioned that it also made my mind go to thinking about whether or not somebody being insensitive or ignorant is necessarily like should that lead to a person being lead labeled as like an ist or phobic of something or like so Basically, my brain just started asking all these questions to myself. So we're going we're gonna, to, I figured we'd, we'd discuss, debate, talk to, and hopefully come to some conclusions on these questions that my brain started rambling through. So here we go. Okay. That's, the, okay. that's, the, that's kind of the backdrop. So the first thing that I was thinking was like, oh, okay, so like, where do you think like the rise in using these terms like racist, uh ageist um fat phobic uh transphobic homophobic like all of these terms these isms and obics where do you think the rise in this started like because like they they're they're as far as being in the dictionary a lot of them have been there but like as far as being used in the way that they're used now and the frequency is which they're thrown around in, in conversation why do you think that people apply these things to so many conversations that may or may not be actually even linked to those? Now, as far as when it started, um, each individual ism has his own current, I'm going to say, start date, um, and each obic. Um, I'm going to say the obics have the earlier start dates as far as current culture in our current society, and then the isms play, came in real strong like a steam room. Um, I feel like we're seeing a, a uptick in the usage of these words in, in situations because people just want to grasp at straws and just use words that they think describe a situation that doesn't adequately describe it because they don't know how to properly use it, um, especially in different situations. Uh, people just, just take homophobic, for instance. A lot of people are called homophobic if they question homosexuality, not uh, damning it, not being hateful or anything, but simply questioning for their own knowledge. That person is not homophobic or have a fear of 
homosexuals because phobic is like you have a fear of, right? Like arachnophobic, fear of spiders, or fear of arachnids. Homophobic translates to fear of homosexuality. It's not, he's not scared of it. He's ignorant to it. So ignorance to the fact should never lead to a label. A person's ignorant. If he's grasping for knowledge or, or, or searching for knowledge, that's one thing. But if he's not searching for knowledge and, and dwelling in ignorance and spewing ignorance, that's a total different thing. And I feel like these days people don't take the time or they think they don't have the time to differentiate between the two things. And they try to lump it all in together and it just makes it look better. Oh, this person is this, this person is. And it makes people, it makes it easier to label people and put people in the box and set your own perspective. Because right now, I feel like the world, the world wants a fantasy, but it needs reality. So they feel more comfortable living in their fantasy where they can just pinpoint who is this and who is this and who is this and live in their fantasy world without coming to reality and doing some real soul searching and knowledge gaining because with both you, you gain knowledge you, you gain a, a brighter perspective on individuals and themselves um you know what like, you said something about like uh can you repeat that last sentence you said um oh what was the exact word you used god damn it see this is what an old man vibe and it was so good oh fuck when you talk all right I'm going to paraphrase since I can't remember the exact word in that you use. But basically when we're talking about people now kind of just like jumping to that, I think it goes to the laziness factor, bro. So I work yeah, with these I work with these young people, right? And I noticed that they're very comfortable, like they're almost like you you got a job, right? You applied for a job. You wanted the job because you went to the interview. You went through the process of background check, drug test, all of this. You're like, you wanted this job. This was a job you were interested in. You got the job. You went through the training for the job. At the training, you saw people doing the job. So you saw what you were going to do right there in front of you. You didn't have to guess. You didn't have to like wonder. I wonder what it's going to be like. Nope, you got to look at it. You stay on the job, and then as soon as you have to do the job, you're fi you're finding reasons. Man, fuck this job. This shit's stupid. What? Like, well, why did you come? You done been through all this part like for free. Now you at the part where you getting paid. Why would you be mad at that part? That seemed like the part you kind of wanted to get to, right? I, but it's laziness. It's the. I, People are now more excited about the idea of things than the actual thing, which leads me to when we look at situations, right, where uh, a, a person is overweight, obese, not even say overweight, because some overweight still looks good and can be healthy and weight. Like, so I ain't tripping on that. I'm going to say obese. I'm like clinically, you are at an unhealthy weight for your body. Like, Big not, shit. not you a little bit thick, not you got a little baby Big fat. I ain't Big talking shit. about people who like, I'm talking about people that are like, come on, bro. Come on, sis. What you doing? Like yeah, like you, you are, you are killing yourself literally just by being this big. So, right. Why is it? It is laziness to me, but it's also more than that. Like, why do you think it is, though, that people will automatically say you're fat phobic if you point out that a person is unhealthy for looking and being that size? Or if you are a person who does not prefer to date people who are that size? And that could be male or female. Like, I ain't tripping on the gender. I just mean, like, if if somebody is over a certain weight or has a certain body type, why is that bad? Like what? 
because you're supposed to, I guess, every everyone's supposed to like everyone, but that ain't how the real world works. Once again, everyone wants to have a fantasy, but they need to re be a reality. Like, everyone has their own standards. That's what makes us unique. We're not uniform. No one's alike. If this world or this country, per se, was a place where everyone was alike, it would be a miserable, bad, miserable ass place. But our rights and our privileges gives us the right to be individually and unique. Just because I point out something doesn't mean I'm shaming. Now, it's a difference in shaming and then pointing out the obvious. I'm making obvious observations. That's it. Shaming is different than pointing out obvious observations. If you're on your job and you're horrible at your job, and I tell you, you suck at your job, I'm not job shaming. I'm pointing out an obvious observation. Right. If you're in your job and you're doing your job, but I'm hating on you because you make one mistake, I'm job shaming. If I'm joking, oh, this nigga, this nigga do this. Ah, this nigga do this. Ah, this person do this. This person do this. That's job shaming. But if I'm telling you, hey, I see you over there. You did a good job on the floors, but you're a floor technician. Obvious observation. Your size is your size. That's how you were made. Your genetics, you're predetermined to whatever size. Now your habits and your, your choices increase or decrease what you were made with. Now if you're a crackhead and everybody in your family's fat, you're not going to be fat. You're going to be a crackhead weight. To build on that, if your race, culture, or religion is generally known for a certain practice, behavior, principle, or thing, that's not somebody being anti-Semitism, anti-Korean, anti-Christian, anti-Catholic. It ain't being anti-nothing. It's pointing out the fact that hey, these things happened. Hey, that happened. That was real. I also think a part of this conversation that isn't often talked about is like you have you got intent and impact, right? So I do think that being insensitive or ignorant has a certain impact, right? And I do think that there that may need to trigger an apology. And that's okay. Like it's okay to apologize. Like if I accidentally hit you in the nose and your nose breaks. Your nose is still fucking broken, whether I meant to or not. So me apologizing for that doesn't mean anything less. Or like that's kind of the right thing to do. Me trying to make amends for that or trying to rectify that situation in some way makes sense. Like if you cause harm to somebody, even unintentionally, making it right makes sense. But I also think we should not condemn people for ignorance when the intent I think we should put people's intent into perspective when we don't pull out the consequence like the consequence for somebody accidentally spilling milk all over the floor may just be to clean it up well not necessarily banning them from the cafeteria where they spilt the milk at you know what I mean like I, I don't know if it was a now if they come in there and they're throwing milk around on purpose then by all means a ban may be you know a necessary step but but I think we kind of apply these heavy handed principles to people who make mistakes sometimes or may just not know no better or may just be like doing something where they're not intending on trying to hurt anybody. It may just end up being their impact. Mm -hmm. I think a big piece of this conversation is like getting back to a point in society where, where it's okay to like make a mistake and then like build from the mistake. Like instead of canceling somebody, like, instead of like being mad at somebody for doing something that puts out misinformation, right? Why not teach them why it's misinformation? Cause obviously if they're putting it out, they believe what they're saying is true. So give them better facts that debunk that and prove something that can grow their brain and then they get better as opposed to just arguing with them and 
canceling them or or now calling them a name like you're saying that they're anti you or that they're phobic of you or that they don't like your people or your culture or your gender or your whatever your race whatever but then you're calling them names so now they gonna double down because now you didn't hurt them so now they defensive mm-hmm. like I, oh, I, th- I think it, it was, if somebody's being an ass cool whatever they get they deserve it because they're purposefully taken upon themselves to do the action that caused the consequence. But if somebody makes a mistake, I think it, it we can't keep throwing people away because it leads to more of these crazy QAnon or SJW or these people that's like overboard and they friend and they extreme and they take things past the point of like being societally comfortable to the point where they become dangerous to themselves or others. A lot of that comes from like the fact that we be throwing people away because they believe some like, yeah, okay, you believe the world flat. All right. Instead of me hating you or calling you names or calling you dumb or something like that, let me let me just talk to you. Let, let's keep comparing facts until one of us get to the p- bottom of it. And I believe that my facts gonna stack up higher than your facts. And at some point you're gonna get to a point where even if you still disagree, cool. That like that's your right. You don't have to believe my fact. That's okay. That don't change the fact that my facts are fact. That don't necessarily make you a bad person. And I think we put too much emphasis on like people not understanding some, and then we call them criminals or horrible people. No, some people just ignorant. Don't know no better yet. If you judge me by the belief I had when I was fucking 20, God bless me. Wisdom comes with age and experience. Yeah, age like experience. you you do shit at one point in your life and then you get a better set of facts and they be like, oh, I was fucking up on that. My bad. Well, damn, let me get better. I got you. You know but what I mean? We gotta like, understand. We gotta understand even deeper who are the people or who are the ones or the age group behind this counseling and throwing away. These are the ones without certain knowledge and without certain experience. So they're going off impulse and the the catch of something or the fad of doing something. But after that is gone and you gain knowledge and you look back on the actions, all you can say is, like you said, try to make amends. But don't be too, too, how can I say, don't rush to make a judgment on somebody or or put a classification on someone. Because at the same time, in the same time it takes you do that to someone, it can easily be done to you. You can put into the be put into the same exact category or one ten times worse, but a category it, it exists out there because more and more categories are being popped up every day, created every day. Excuse me, more isms, more more all this bullshit. When at the end of the day, the true message is to love one another, be nice. That's it. We it's all free. ain't gonna get along. We all ain't gonna get along. We always gotta respect each other. That's it. As long as somebody ain't out outwardly trying to disrespect you, and it's a difference, people, between being disrespected and just not liking what someone had to say. But bro, big big difference. But bro, we don't even respect apologies. Like I would love to see you. Your, where we would like actually respect and accept an apology as long as there's no action after the apology that negates it. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. give people a chance to about, like, you may not like their tone. who, But give them a chance to prove if their apology was real or not before you just throw them out with the bad water and say, well, fuck you. I don't believe your apology. So, like, if the person is apologizing, especially in this day and age where people are so into the double down culture, like, I'm going to just stand. I'm going to stand on what I said. Fuck that. Even if I'm wrong, I said it, so I meant it. God damn it. I'm I'm telling you. Just loud and wrong. You know, so, like, I I think for somebody to apologize in this day and age is already a sign in the right direction because most people don't want to. Now, if they 
if, if they apologize under weird circumstances, like the Kyrie thing where he apologized after he done lost all the money as opposed to when he first felt like, I guess, he did some whatever. Give him a chance. Let's see what his actions are before we just throw him away because if he said he didn't know that he was going to cause this problem, are we just mad because he believes in whatever the video says? If he hasn't done anything at all to support that he like necessarily believes everything in, like you know what I'm saying? Like maybe he really was just ignorant to the way the optics of it because he's so self-absorbed. He really just didn't think about it. There's a thing that people being so blissfully selfish that they are so into their own world bubble view, like that they really don't think about how other people gonna see shit because they just happy to see that shit the way they do. I don't give a damn how you say it. I, well, I think it's gonna be great. So I think everybody gonna think it's gonna be great. Cause I mean, I think it's like I like it. So I know y'all gonna like it. I'm me, and I think, well, and I think a lot of the people that, especially these days. Now, I won't say everybody because there's a lot of people that may deserve to kind of be lowered from their platform of influence, but. A lot of people are just young and dumb or they're just like ignorant to the subjects that they're speaking on, but they are passionate about it. And a lot of people, that's most people, especially when you first introduced to something, a lot of people will get introduced to something new. And they're so excited about the new thing that they haven't finished learning it, but they have uh, what is it? The Dunning-Kruger effect where they believe they are genius on something, the less they know about it. You know what I mean? I think. I think that's the Dunning Kruger. It's one of them damn uh scientists uh stu studies effect though. But it's like the smarter, like people think they know more about a subject the less they have experience in that field or that subject. And that's, that's a common theme across society. So like, I think let's stop holding if the torch to people and burning them at the stake because they don't. Or oh, they just ignorant on something. Let's just teach them. They might they might end up making them better, and they might end up being a good catalyst for change with somebody else in their sphere of influence that is also ignorant. But along with the let's just teach them, we also have that other subculture that's like fuck teaching them. They don't want to listen. Yes. You feel? So these motherfuckers, you got you got some motherfuckers who want to teach. But motherfuckers who don't want to listen and gonna stand on it regardless of what the information is, they can be flat on their face wrong, they can see it in the mirror wrong, but they don't give a fuck. That's real. That's real. We 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 live in an era where dictionary words you can look up the terms, look up how to use it, and people still don't use the word the correct way. Come on, come on. You feel me? You look, we live in a time where. People create their own words, like mm -hmm. the word chili. When did that become child? Boy, you stupid. I'm serious. <laughs> Motherfuckers use shit for what they want to. And just uh, that's not what that said. This is what this is. No. Because if somebody <laughs> would ever put that in any correspondence to me, I'm like, what are you talking about this place for? No, I was saying child. First of all, why is you saying child in the correspondence with me? And why the fuck did you spell it like that? That's a place. That's fuck. Chill is a beautiful time. We also live in the time of champion, championing the victim. It's one thing to have empathy for a victim, but it's another thing to try to champion someone just because you perceive them as a victim. When it comes to someone speaking on someone, oh, that person's overweight. Oh, you're fat shaming. Don't talk about this person. This person is this, and this person's fabulous. And this person, motherfucker, they still big. They can still be big and fabulous, but they yes. still big. Shit. As somebody comes here, Tia's got the biggest note. All right, Tia's got a big note. Okay. Hey. That that's true. That's not a bad thing. That's just somebody saying what's what's factually correct. Like people gotta be real. Like where is the self awareness of people? Like, why is it so 
us to just see what the truth is. Like, there is none. We need we need that old big man motherfucker to hold up in your face. 95 percent of us are average as fuck. Actually, ninety five percent of us are not great. Let's start there. You got five percent that's great. Then you got ninety five percent that's not great. Now out of that ninety five percent, about thirty percent of that is below average. Mm-hmm. And then there's the rest of us that's average as fuck, flawed up, not that great. We are we are a, we are a world of fives through sevens. But we keep on wanting to throw ourselves into the 10 lifestyle. And most of us are not that. And I mean Can't be that a damn with seven ten. in the terms of looks, but also in the terms of behaviors, in the terms of mastery of skill, in the terms of being great in a field, in a job, like all of these, all of these ways that you can be tens and something. You know what I mean? Like most people are not that we most of us are average and we're just plugging along and people <laughs> think the average shit is so it, it's so spectacular because they're not seeing the normalcy and the averageness we keep applying ourselves to people who make millions of dollars and most of us in lifetime like the average income for at least men is like forty some thousand for women. I think it's like fifty thousand, fifty six. Like, but it's not like people out here balling. Like most, and that's and that's like for the most people. Like the average, like everything else drops below that. And then you jump up into the top ten percent when you get a hundred thousand. Like, do you realize how small of a, a portion of, of the world 10% is? Like, in your family, 10% ain't that much. But in the state you live in, 10% is a lot of motherfuckers. 8 million people, 10% is a lot. But that 90 is even more. <laughs> like, it, it, like, we ain't gonna, like, we just gotta be real. Oh, he more. Some people are fat. Some people are unattractive based off of what we deem attractive in society. Whether that's fair or not, don't matter. That's a fact. Now we can debate the fairness of a fact all you want to, and that's cool. But change. What change is the fact. Now, if people stop judging off of that beauty standard and that shift, then we're talking about a different conversation. But, I mean, we can't be, like, when I even think about, like, when people get mad about people talking about looks and shit, that really pisses me off. Because, like, we're going to act like looks ain't a thing. But even mm -hmm. when... Even porn made for women have these men that look a certain have a certain aesthetic. So you're telling me that even the people who claim that men are shallow, so that means everybody is looking at look. You look at porn for most of it, and we're talking in generalities. We're not talking about friends. We're not talking about five and ten percent because that's not everybody. Most people is in that. Big chunk of ninety percent. Most porn for men. So most things that men are using to get sexually aroused are based around a certain look. No matter the race, a certain body figure, a certain aesthetic, a certain focus on certain body part. That is what it. That must be. That must mean that universally, a lot of these things matter to people. So why would he get mad when trying to say it? Now, do that mean that you ain't going to never get nobody if you are ugly, fat, 
big nose, big headed, whatever. No, because somebody like that. It's somebody for everybody. It just may be a smaller amount of people than like another thing. Like when I was growing up and I was in elementary school, like so when I'm in like third, like first through third grade, I did my thing with the ladies. You know, I was a cool a dude. They wanted to sit on the mat with me at, you know, at, at uh, nap time and stuff, you know. But <coughs> I noticed light skinned niggas at that time, that's what was in. That's what was deemed by society <coughs> as being the 5 to 10%. So I noticed that they got a few more ladies that wanted to come sit on the mat with them. <coughs> Excuse me. This Skittle juice is about to fuck me <laughs> all the way up. You drink some water. God damn. I'm about to. I had to get it. I had to stop. Catch a breath. I had to be to breathe. Nigga, muscle wouldn't move. Couldn't get no oxygen to it. Go, 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 yeah, but uh, <laughs> but um, uh, I think in order to change, I think the, the 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 worst thing is we never get to see who can change or who does want to learn because we shut people out so quick when they say something that we don't like. It don't even have to be real that bad it's just we don't like it so now it's a is or a ism or a obic no some shit you just don't like it but that don't mean it was none of those words but it's stupid as fuck do your research people learn what words mean yes you stop internalizing every damn thing that happens out in the world because everything that is said to you don't apply to you. Well, motherfucker has no you gotta go got to look at context too, man. Got to look at context. Context is key. Context is motherfucking key. There's a reason if you talk to a motherfucker and they point out something. It's no anger, it's no nothing. Why are you getting upset? Listen. Be wise enough to not be reactionary. So you can justfully think about and perceive the information that just went into your cranial cortex. Then give a proper response. You have the time to do that. Everything don't have to be split second. Yeah. Knee jerk reaction. Don't be so quick, man. Don't be so quick to put people in a box. Because once you put them in there, it's hard for them to ever come out that box, <laughs> regardless of what action, apology, or anything they try to do. You can always see them, and they will be always seen in that box. And now we're talking about masses of people looking at this one person or a group of people in a small box or in a, 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 a ism or a, a, a phobic box. It's hard for them to ever come back. Big fact. You got to be a certain. It only takes a. It, it takes a certain caliber of person to be able to come back and still Big have bit. the same and still have the same prowess that it did before the so-called council or so-called throwaway. Let's stop throwing people away, man, and give people a chance. Some people, some people deserve to be thrown away. Let's look at their actions, not just their words, man. If somebody's giving their personal opinion on some shit, that's their personal opinion. But what you need to not, don't get mad at them because of their opinion. Just tell them shut the fuck up and tell them keep their opinion to themselves. Because they can still have the same opinion. They have the same opinion. But you never know if they kept it to them fucking selves. Okay? Once again, like I always say, hmm? what is that? I I said, and just talk to people and, again, see what people's intent is before you mm -hmm. just Because I think Damn about, man. like, on the gay tip, right, like, my cousin Dante, my, 
one of my cousins, cousins, like he was gay all my life, and he, you know, my age, so we grew up together. Everybody knew he was gay in the neighborhood and shit. So all my life, I ain't never really had no big issue with gay folk, but I always had a big problem with like gay PDA, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody hears that and just takes me at just that, right? Mm -hmm. Not really that my cousin, I don't like fought for this nigga. I, like, I love this dude. Like, he's one of my favorite cousins to this day. Now, if somebody don't know me, they just judge me off the fact that I don't like to see gay people have PDA, right? They they cancel me. Oh, get him out of here. He's uh what it was gay phobic, uh homophobic. Uh what yeah. Right? But mm -hmm. it was to I was today years old when I broke that shit down and talking to Pook about what I was gonna talk about tonight. And I realized, no, I ain't got shit to do with them being gay. I don't like seeing really nobody else kissing and all that shit. Mm hmm like if I'm doing it, I'm cool with it. Like public, hey, yeah, y'all watch me, goddammit. But I don't really care to see other people. And I mm -hmm. and I broke that even further, which is weird and how nuanced the world is and people are, and we gotta really like give people the ability to be like not just one thing. Cause I broke that even further. Now it ain't that I don't like gay people PDA, I don't like anybody PDA. However, been involved in orgies had no problem with watching somebody else kiss, slob down all types of body parts, and cool. So you go like so, but my but that's how the human brain works. It's like multiple things can all be true in a person, in the way a person has their perspectives on the world, because each situation is kind of not necessarily just the same. It may be the same involved it may be the same topic but even one topic can spur off three to ten different ways to look at it and go with it like even you look at us like we might talk about the same situation that happened in the news or something but it may be about ten different things it may be one thing about the politics of it the, oh this religion thing came up about it oh well this thing made me think about relationships oh well you know this movie was tied into this you know what I mean so I think when you think about the human psyche and the way we really built we got to give each other more credit for just being multifaceted like we not just monolith we, we kind of can be a lot of different things so you got to give people a shot and that's the hardest thing motherfuckers do these days. Because everybody trying to be the hard motherfucker who don't give a fuck. But all you do is show that you truly do give a fuck. So give a nigga a chance. Give a nigga a chance. And, uh, stop throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And I wonder who started that saying. Like, who, Somebody the hell was, did that too. who was out here accidentally forgetting that the baby was in the bath and just tossing the baby out. <laughs> like, what the fuck was happening back in the day that somebody came with that? Like, what? who was out here going out with this? You what know what you I found to be a cool thing to do now? Uh, I Google words not used anymore. If them do that shit. You see how many words motherfuckers don't use no more and they've been taken out of the dictionary. They... I don't understand. Like, why, why would you throw a baby? Like, what the babies then did? Baby just trying to walk. Baby just want to wrench around. Off. Just want to wrench around and wrench it off. That's all the baby want to do. Yeah, you do the baby. Yeah, and what off, I bet you defects or you know the Department of Family Services was full back in the day <laughs> with with the cases of parents throwing babies out with the water. Another one, Johnson. Shit. You'd be surprised the motherfucker used to do back in the day. That's why bubble bath solution and got so watered down now over the years. They like mm -hmm. 
they're too thick. They need to be able to see the baby. You never know. They'll throw their ass out. Shit, that could be something with it. That shit is. That shit is diluted. Who the fuck was throwing out, baby? Yo. Yo. My brain is like, like, I see it. I see it, yo. I see it. <laughs> America just, huh? Oh, damn it. Sally. Oh, damn, no, Could be some of them shits like you know need to take the little tub down to the pond, put the water in the pond, and set the baby in there, wash them, and forgot and just dump the water back in the pond. Baby been in the pond with the damn water. Oh damn the baby! baby down there with now the you got to go swim and get the damn baby. Better hope the damn baby float. Baby dead is a donut. Donut. Oh god! Oh my god! Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, shit. Oh, that shit won't look good. That shit won't look good, ain't it? Oh, God, Jesus. Give me pause, God. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. They done heard that shit before. I don't even know if I'm bleeding. I'm not. Oh, God, Jesus. Oh. That mm-hmm. hurts so much. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. I ain't got my glasses, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> yo, god damn. Um sorry about that pause part. Uh, I just bit the shit out of the inside of my lip. Fuck around eating pistachios and uh that shit hurt like a motherfucker. Oh. Mm-hmm. Eat a piece of Woo! bread. No, what nigga, what? I'm not choking on a fish bone. What the fuck is bread gonna do for <laughs> me? Okay. I don't know. Bread tastes good. Shit. Hey, yo, you stupid as hell for that, nigga. Okay. Bread. Nigga, what the oh, fuck the bread got to do with this? Like, what is that? What, what Want some bread? <laughs> Want some <of> biscuits? <laughs> hell, Chris. To this day, that, that may be the funniest moment of my life. To this day. Oh, shit. And I've, yeah. I've heard from comedic geniuses. But that yeah. dumb shit may be the funniest moment of my life where I've laughed the hardest. Damn right, nigga. Like I've never like I've heard of people peeing on themselves. <laughs> but, and that may have been the closest I've ever came to like experiencing it. Like nothing came out, but I could see how somebody could let it go <laughs> based on I can see it. I can see how we'll go down. <laughs> yeah. I just remember Kool Aid going all over the table, and Granny being mad as hell at me for messing up uh, the little banquet. Oh yeah, I was good for messing up the banquet. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Show was well, y'all show was. God forgive me. Don't do me like that. Mm. Oh. Um, what else was that? Mm-hmm. I don't know what I was gonna say, so uh, I guess that's where we're gonna end it. I don't uh, know, it's a good place to me, brother man. <laughs> but uh, people judge people off the intent, not just the impact. Um, live in reality, not in fantasy. I mean that, and uh, Please. just. Ola Robinson, whatever happened truly to that young lady, please let us find out, get justice for her and her family, and like let's stop having these weird ass moments keep happening to our people where we losing folk and don't make sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't got nothing else after that. Um, Black Bears of the Week. Black business, black business in the week once again bringing you TNG beating. That's trust in God beating. Um, you can find them on whatever social media platform is out there. Um, TNG beating. That's TNG. That's trust in God beating. No, are you saying beating like? No, beating like beads. Okay, beating. Got it. I was mm-hmm. mishearing. They beating. Oh, Not beating. Yeah, I'm dumb. I, I was sitting there like, so 
huh? How that got to do with Jerry and stuff? All right, okay. Now that makes sense. Now that make a lot of them. You talking about like Jim Stone? Well, motherfuckers, yeah, yeah. Fuck out of people and shit. Like motherfuckers, what they, what people need to create a business need to be out there is some some beatings. Like motherfuckers need their ass whipped, or you got a bad kid and you don't know how to do it. Yo, one eight hundred, one eight hundred beatings. Call us, we'll beat your kid ass. <laughs> Call us, we'll jack your kid up for a number of feet. Call beating. Call us. Oh well, yeah, trusting God, God beating man. Trusting God beating. Um. Look them up on social media. They do real good work, real quality work, um, good fair prices. So holla at it, man. Black owned business of the week. Of the week, week, week. I love it. Make sure you get your jewelry on. It's holiday season. So go good ahead. Gifts. There. Good gifts. Good gifts. You get your gifts on early. You know good. that the holiday season is slowing down. Everything starts slowing down. So you want to get your family, man. Gifts for the whole family. Um, it might but be if you have, that would be hilarious because trusting God is definitely something that you would say to somebody when you beating the shit out. Well, you been trusting God. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> try Jesus. Please don't try me. Not me, please. Not right up there. Not right there. <laughs> Um, and and we're trying Jesus. Try to find us. We are we are everywhere. Um, we on your social Ooh, media, man. you know, at the partners on everything, um, except for Facebook. And with, there we are, Tears Face Pat. All the partners you can see, Tears Face Pat, uh, either right up there, um, on on on, on my screen. Hold on, let me, where is that? Okay, no, it's on my left. It's on my, it's on my left, uh, up there in that top left corner, right there. You will, see, you will see the logo, so you can see Tears Face Pat. So just say Tears Face Pat are uh, the partners, and then um, that's on Facebook. Everything else is at the partners. Just Google the partners, and you, and we'll pop up or, or put us in yep. the search box. Pop up. Uh, make sure you listen to us on whatever your favorite podcast platform is. If you listen to us on Spotify, make sure you go ahead and become a monthly supporter for four ninety nine. You can donate, give us money if you want to at Partner Tears One. That's dollar sign Partner Tears One on Cash App, or you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners, where you can donate for as little as a dollar, or you can also become a monthly supporter there and get exclusive content sent to your way. Um, otherwise, man, how can they get merch from us? Like, if they want to like give us money, but well, then they want some shit back. Like, they don't want to just give us money and then we just get money. They want to get as of no as of December the third, two thousand twenty two. Go to our trade Hey, same, we back. same we website back. home, new new website look. Um, new format. Gonna have some new stuff up there. Um, yeah, the only place you can ever get any partners podcast merchandise, man. The only place. Come oh, check man. out our trade clothing or AC83 if you want to call it. Pretty cool stuff there. Come check it out, man. Got some good stuff. I know wintertime is here, but everyone likes slides for the house. Get some of them AC83 slides. Get some partner slides. Yeah. Get some socks to go with your slides. Get an outfit. Get a hat. And then get a you bag. See, get a pull-up. You see somebody with an AC. Hoodie and some tears socks, and they say they got it from somewhere other than artreeclothing.com. Know that they got it from Canal Street. That shit is bootleg and chuck and reported to us at one of those social medias that we gave you. Oh, um, other my man, we about this thing. As always, I've been one third of the partners, your boy Tears. And this week I've been along with. Your boy face man finishing first place. Pat ain't here. Yeah. Pat but he always in the third. 
Always, always. You see him in the logo up there looking down. You know, he was listening, giggling, you know, putting in his jokes. Uh, I'm sure he would have been here pausing it up with me. Um, but yeah. Um, love y'all, man. Love you, bro. And uh, we are about to say, hope y'all have a blessed week. You can catch us on A Brother of a Certain Age uh, on his channel tomorrow night at around 9, 15, 30. Uh, and yeah, man, we about this bitch. He's motherfucker. <laughs> I forgot I was in full screen, so I got to exit full screen to then leave out. And then I'll be like, you know, able to stop the recording and stuff. So yeah, you know, made it a little longer than I expected. Oh, shit.